Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the Firefish Software Future of Rec Crowdcast and Podcast. Um, today I am delighted to be joined by Christina from Green Umbrella. Hi everyone, good to good to be here. Christina, thank you very much for taking the time out to uh, to come in and join us today. Um, having saw you in London last week, I know uh, you are running about and extremely busy at the moment, so thanks very much for taking the time out. Um, for anyone who's joined us today who, who hasn't either uh, met you at any of the events or been on any of your online uh, online stuff, can you just give the audience a little bit of an intro to you and a little bit of background, please? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'm Christina Robinson from Green Umbrella Marketing. So we are a digital marketing agency working predominantly within the recruitment sector um, we offer sort of social media management that's our core service but we do loads of coaching and training around that as well um, we do email marketing blogging we we'll talk to you about video content um, and we also sort of bridge things between sort of you know the new ways of doing things and your traditional marketing so we offer print and design as well so it's quite a quite a wide quite a wide area really that I end up talking about at these things but um but I love it it's yeah great. that's awesome so um we've met at numerous events um all over the place and absolutely love the content and the stuff that you put out there so wanted to get you on today just to have a chat about social media in general for recruiters um as well as um a couple of sort of uh hacks and things that people can take away and start to implement in their business um from the various different platforms out there so i guess the number one one for a lot of people on here today will probably be a uh, linkedin so um what would you say is the biggest mistake that you see recruiters make on LinkedIn and how would you suggest they maybe overcome that? Um, I think it's probably the fact that they recruiters are really good at building networks on LinkedIn. So they've got, you know, thousands, tens of thousands of connections on the platform. Um, but it's a bit like your database. You kind of you put your emails into your database and it just sits there. We're not doing anything with it. We might do a search every now and then, but we're not engaging with it. Um, and I think that's probably the biggest thing. People are really proud about the size of their LinkedIn network. But actually, when we ask them when they last sort of engaged with the people that they're connected to, it just doesn't happen. And there's um, there's some really easy ways of, of doing that and, and sort of automating the process as well. Cool. So tell me a little bit more about that then in terms of the automation side of things. Yeah. So um, probably the... My number one kind of trick, if you like, is using duck soup, um, mm -hmm. which is so we just use or sort of say to people, use the free version of duck soup. Um, it's a Chrome add on. Um, and basically, I will look at my first connections and I will use duck soup to automate visiting those profiles and leaving that breadcrumb trail so that people are then picking up those little messages that I visited their profile. Because we're first connections, it doesn't feel like something that's intrusive yeah. um, and then you tend to find that actually because they're looking at you they might click around on some of the activity you've done recently um, that, so they engage with that whilst they're there which then helps you to appear in their newsfeed more regularly um, and like I said you end up if you can create a world in social media where you see someone in a room You've been connected for years. You've never actually met them. But when you greet, it's like big hugs as if you're the best of mates. Yeah. Created that sort of interaction. To me, that's what success looks like when it comes to engaging my network. Um, and like I said, you know, simply doing that works really well. Sometimes I have to sort of just reinforce the fact that I'm not actually stalking people. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, like I said, it's that sort of consistent visit to their profile, consistently being on someone's radar. Um, yeah, and it's just a fantastic way to do it. Just re-engage that database all the time. Yeah, it's, it's, connections. it's probably the best live list of information that a recruiter will ever have is like their social media connections in terms of living, breathing. You can see people actually updating information in real time. And that's cool. I love that. And I think like, like that analogy that you gave about just appearing into a room and everybody knowing who you are, I think that's the name of the game. And I think a lot of people on here would absolutely love to be able to have that sort of reaction if they attended something. Yeah, it is a bit daunting. Don't, yep. don't get me wrong when you 
the thing about social media is that it's social. You can't just be social online and then be in a room of people and just disappear into the corner. If, if you're going to do it, you need to commit. And like I said, that the perfect world scenario is that what you're doing online, you can actually take offline as well. Yeah. And it becomes a very real and, and those relationships become very genuine then as well. Yeah, cool. Do you know what the URL is for DuckSoup? They spell it funny, don't they? It's not. Is it? Yeah, so it's um, it's dux soup.com. Cool. I'll uh, see if Amy, our social media person, is listening in. If she could pop that in the comments, that would be awesome. So people can see, uh, can go ahead and give that a, a check out. Do, do you think. Um, so a lot of recruiters will um, talk about the live vacancies and stuff like that, live job requirements that they're currently working um, on uh, LinkedIn, and they might even post links and stuff back to the opportunities on their websites and everything, which is which is cool. Um, do you think paid for advertising, like out with the job slots on LinkedIn, is is a worthwhile investment for recruiters? Have you seen anyone have success with that? If you're very, very niche, mm-hmm. very, very niche, then yes. If you're more generalist, then you need to approach it in a different way. Um, the thing with advertising on LinkedIn is it's incredibly expensive in comparison with the other options that are out there. Okay. So the way I use LinkedIn advertising is very much more around I'll do Facebook ads Mm -hmm. all day long and that will get me kind of you know if you think about sort of your sales funnel yeah uh, yeah that will get me three quarters of the way through my funnel okay LinkedIn ads then I've got a really specific audience to target um and that's how I then then see LinkedIn ads sort of working as part of a broader strategy. But they really are something where you, you need to use it carefully because it is just so expensive. Okay, cool. Um, if anyone has any questions for Christina as we go through this today, feel free just to pop them in the comments box and we'll uh, we'll, we'll do our best to get them answered as we progress through. Um, just on the engagement side of things there and like the conversations, quite often when I'm speaking to recruiters about social media and uh, social selling, one of the things that they say is like in terms of getting involved in conversations um, without the pitch and one of the little sort of hacks that I quite like is that is searching on the content um, tab on LinkedIn. A lot of people don't use it, um, but if you were recruiting in a niche like data science, um, I like to go ahead and like search on the, the content tab and then get involved in conversations on that with people outside my network as well. That's worked quite well for me in terms of getting new connection requests and getting online conversations that I can then take to try and move offline as well. Yeah, it's, you know, if I kind of wind back five years, you know, LinkedIn groups were fantastic for getting in front of different people that's changed and it doesn't matter how much they're telling us that they're updating groups it isn't changing however communities so using your hashtags and doing your searches that way diving into conversations that way is fantastic it's really really worthwhile um i don't know if you if you've um, noticed cami but your LinkedIn company page now, you can assign three hashtags to the company page so that your company page can actually jump into those conversations too, which Ah. is is fantastic. Um, But yeah, it it kind of showcases the the hashtags. So I wouldn't use social media as a hashtag on the green umbrella page because it's just too wide. Millions of people are going to be using that hashtag. Yeah. Um, however, social snippet, which is our monthly um, sort of social media update magazine that goes out to our clients, we've showcased that on our profile, and we encourage people to post, you know, a little selfie of them with the social snippet, um, and then the page is able to engage with that as well, which is fantastic. That's awesome. And um, so Angela Patterson's just asked there, the company page, is that like, that's the corporate the company corporate page? page. Yeah. yeah, corporate page. So that's awesome. So I guess like if you're a, that's brilliant actually. So if you're an agency that's really cornering a niche, you can attribute that niche to hashtag to your, your Absolutely. company page. Yeah. You know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use IT jobs, for example, it's just way too broad, but yeah. if it's something you can bring in. If you've, if you've been using a branded hashtag and you've been using it for a while and you know, you've got a bit of noise around that, then yes, definitely use it. Yeah. Um, but you know, when we decided to add social snippet to ours, we did some work beforehand before we added it to the page. Cause like I said, it is being showcased publicly. Yeah, that's cool. That's a great, that's a great takeaway for anyone that wants to have a look at that. Um, 
I noticed as well recently on the company pages, this was a bit of content that you put out that people were able to go, if some company pages were able to go in and actually invite people to like their page. Yeah. Now, what's your view on that? Don't spam. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Okay. Okay. So it's a fantastic functionality. I thank, you know, how long have we had that on Facebook? Yeah. You know, it's crazy that we've only just got it on LinkedIn. But the reality is if you now you can't personalize things you you know it is literally someone receives a notification that looks like a personal profile's been created in the name of a company and that mm -hmm. that company wants to connect so we've got to really treat it quite carefully at the minute so only just rolling out so some, not everyone's got it some people that have had it have now had it removed so we need to let the dust settle on it yeah. but in reality there's you know it is a click of a button you can only invite people once yeah i'm not saying don't do it but what I'm saying is, let's say I've, um, so I've spoken to someone this morning for the first time. They're interested in working with us. I'm having a bit of a sort of back and forth interaction with them. We're already connected on LinkedIn. So my next thing now is to send him that request because it's quite a subtle way of saying, here's another way of staying in touch with us. And it's part of our communication you know, yeah. it, it's a natural, natural social interaction. Um, whereas if I go through my A's and go invite, 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 it's, you know, it could be people that are thinking, well, you know, Christina doesn't talk to me normally. Yeah. You know, why have I suddenly got this? Um, and it's subtle, but your name is attached to that invite as well. So again, I don't want to be seen as a spammer. I want yeah. to be seen as adding value. So I'm going to do it at a point in my communication with someone where it adds value. Yeah, cool. I kind of felt, felt to us a little bit that maybe the because it's only been rolled out to some that the feature's not really been complete yet. Like the fact that you can't personalize the outreach, it does just feel a bit spammy. I've been inundated with them since the feature was turned on and it's become more of an annoyance actually I'm just ignoring yeah. them because I've, I've got a relationship maybe with specific people at these organizations um yeah this we'll see see what comes of it um hopefully it continues to improve um I would you know growing growing followers on company pages is really tough it's really slow it's quite painful one of the best strategies we've ever had is take it out of LinkedIn doing the email marketing piece so that is your call to action is follow us on LinkedIn yeah you know and actually doing it that way outside of LinkedIn if, if it's a, a branded email an HTML email using the blue color so it feels like a LinkedIn email yeah. as well it works really really well and I think will continue to work better than the inviting your connections yeah cool so Will's just saying that DuckSip looks interesting and um, but he'd be keen to know a little bit more about what it actually does so, um, like I said, there's free and there's paid options, but basically it will automate looking through profiles. It will allow you to put notes on profiles, um, all sorts of tags and that kind of thing. If you go for the paid option, you can also do sort of bulk messaging, that kind of thing too. Okay, cool. Nice one. Thanks. Um, um, sorry, Richard just mentioned LinkedIn Helper. It is a similar tool. Cool. All right. Nice one. Um, let's move on to uh, Facebook. So similar um, sort of question as to LinkedIn. I mean, what were you seeing any common mistakes that recruiters are making on Facebook? Uh, and if so, any uh, tips, hints and tips as to how to overcome them? Um, I think that we can be impatient. I think the recruiters that use Facebook are, you know, that there's it's blue collar roles predominantly um, mm -hmm. and you know we've, we've got something come in and it's an urgent need we, we need to get these vacancies filled so right let's get it on Facebook and let's hit boost and throw yeah. 50 quid at it and um, I would say to any recruiter that's just going yeah let's just boost it please give that money to charity instead because <laughs> you'll get more value from it um, if you're going to advertise on Facebook, if you're going to spend money um, and put cash in Mark Zuckerberg's back pocket, go through Ads Manager. Like I say, consider how you're going to get those ca you know, passive candidates from never having heard of your brand to aware of it, to following you, to you know, clicking through to your website, 
retargeting them using Facebook Pixel. Um, I said, there's just so much more we can do. A boost is, you know, Facebook's objective is to show everyone that pen and that's it. It's tick to box. You paid for that. And with the same money, you can have the objective is that someone's got to click through to that page on your website or they've actually got to engage with that post or they've got to have viewed the video. Um, All of which are things that you can then use to run a second or a third advert that pushes you know it creates data that you can use going forward yeah whereas you know that pen i just showed you it didn't yeah. do anything yeah so you can you can push them down the funnel more than just clicking the boost button and absolutely and you can you know that boost button will show one variation of your post for the same money i could be showing you that pen in green and red and pink and yellow and actually starting to learn what people are responding to more um, and retargeting based on that engagement as well. So I'm delivering a more personalized social experience. Yeah, cool. Um, is, if anyone on here has got any experience with advertising on Facebook, drop comments um, down below. Um, the Facebook pixel you mentioned a moment ago. Um, so I um, visited a website one day and the next thing I scrolled on uh, on along Facebook and it was like a picture, it was a guy called Gavin Bell um, and I visited his website and it came up like this and it was like Gavin saying, hey, thanks very much for uh, stopping by the website. You know, here's like an ebook on X. What an impact that had. You know, I was on his website an hour ago, jumped on Facebook and there he was and it was like, it's just really powerful. Yeah. Um, would you suggest that recruiters should be using the pixel to retarget? Absolutely, 100%. Um, and not a lot of people realize it, but LinkedIn has its own version of the pixel as well. So have both added to your website. Um, so your pixel is a little bit of tracking code, works like Google Analytics does. It just notices people coming to your website. But what it does is it then recognizes them as a Facebook user. And this is where it can really come into its own. So there's the retargeting piece um, that obviously you've just mentioned. Um, but it's also, rather than me creating a, an, an advert and saying, I want to target people that are... 25 to 55 in this location with interests in xyz i can say everyone that visited this specific page i want to target people that look like that Mm -hmm. so facebook then do that data mining or linkedin do the data mining based on what they've recorded that's so powerful you know especially if you're in you know even if you're yeah even for niche roles there's a lot of stuff you could do with that yeah that's awesome um, I would suggest that even if you're not looking at paid advertising on LinkedIn um, or on Facebook at the minute, get it set up because it only starts tracking from the minute it's on your website. So if you do that now and you decide not to spend any money for 12 months, you've still got 12 months worth of data to work with rather than starting with nothing. When yeah. Uh, Danny's asking about the installing the pixels. Yeah, you can just go into link, just search like how to install the LinkedIn pixel on Google, and you'll find some information. It's just, um, it's just a little bit of code that you pop in. Same, same for Facebook. Um, and that advice that you're giving there is really good as well. So if you're if you don't have budget to do this stuff just now, just start building up the data set. So if you do in the future, you just turn it on, and you can um, you can you can go for it. Just mm. cool. Um, so Ernie's asking, uh, Ernie's joining us all the way from the States. So thanks for coming on, Ernie. Uh, he's finding that his blogs are getting more reads than articles. Um, are you also finding this outcome? Um, so I assume you talk about LinkedIn and the published articles. Uh, yeah, cool. So, yeah, absolutely. I would say you, the LinkedIn articles have just taken a bit of a nosedive probably over the last three, four months. Um, Right now, I have to admit, it is a strategy we're sticking with just because of the power we're seeing in communities. So sometimes with LinkedIn, it's kind of that they do a little tweak here or a tweak there and it breaks something else. It's probably the, the most clunky of all the platforms when it comes to development. So I'm really aware that we're not getting the traction on articles at the minute, but you know, they actually, they add a lot of value to your personal profile. So that even with that in mind, I think there's still a lot of reason to be using them right now. 
and we yeah. might see that they have a lift again um, in the future. Yeah, it's a good point. I've continued to um, just repurpose the blogs that I put on the Firefish site onto out as Pulse articles as well, just to keep that ticking over. So you can always repurpose stuff. And, you know, as you say, it's a good credibility builder as well. If someone comes back to your profile and they can see all the stuff you've written in the past on your actual profile, um, it allows you to sort of build your uh, build your as a go-to person in the niche. Mm -hmm. um, Talk a little bit about uh, groups, um, LinkedIn groups versus Facebook groups. Have you seen much change in that over the past year? Yeah, massively. So Facebook groups now, you know, gone are the days where you went to a Facebook group because you wanted to sell the, you know, whatever toy your kids finished with playing with. Um, there are just, there's tons of industry sector specific groups now happening on Facebook. Um, and I think it's fantastic. It's really, really social. It's a fantastic networking opportunity. I think the conversations that go on in these groups are also, um, I don't know, people seem to be a little bit braver with them as well. They can get a bit controversial. You see far more debates going on. It's like, you know, boxing gloves are off kind of thing. Um, and like I said, I think they're actually, they're, they're really worthwhile sort of just having a look and joining. There's some sectors that we're seeing them um, in more. So definitely like IT and tech, definitely we're seeing more groups around that. I'm not seeing so many around construction at the minute. Mm -hmm. um, and I would, I don't know about you, Cam, but I'd say construction as a sector for recruiters um, is one that's booming. We're seeing more and more new recruitment businesses coming in focused on construction at the minute. Yeah, it's flying at the moment as an industry. Absolutely flying. We're getting loads of new startup agencies in that space at the moment. Um, cool. So Twitter. Uh, oh, actually, I've got a question for the audience. Um, we're chatting about this in the office. Um, how many uh, people, uh, how many recruiters in, in this just now will feel comfortable adding clients and candidates to your Facebook network? Or would you just keep it to LinkedIn? So we were having a chat about this earlier on. I'm keen to get some people's views on this. Would you ever add a client or a candidate as a friend on Facebook? What's your view on that, actually, Christina? So given the job that I do, I'm actually quite a private person. Mm -hmm. okay? So, and I have to say, when my kids were younger, yep. I probably didn't accept anyone. But, you know, they're both in their teens now. They're both, they've got social media profiles of their own. So I'm definitely more open to it now than I was. Um, so, and doing the job that I do, when it comes to Facebook, I know people are going to look me up anyway. So I've always yeah. made sure there's content there that is public. Mm -hmm. you know, for public consumption but I am really careful um you know I've been away with my mum this weekend and that kind of stuff that you know those posts I'm not sharing with the world um yeah. a lot of my life is online for everyone to see so I need a little bit kept back for myself actually yeah. thank you very much yeah and I think that's absolutely fair enough there's no right or wrong answer with this it's just got a bit of a discussion going earlier yeah. on um and I think like you know I post a lot of content on LinkedIn a little bit of content on Facebook Instagram that sort of stuff and if people want to see me playing at the swings with my, my uh, with my daughter on, on Facebook then that's fine uh, but you'll get more business related content on uh, on LinkedIn from yeah. me but, um, I think it matters on the relationship as well so there, there are clients that are Facebook friends but they've been clients for years yeah years and years and you know and and so actually again clues in the title social it yeah. gets to the point where you've crossed they're not just a client anymore you've crossed that line and um not i should rephrase that i haven't crossed a line with anything <laughs> <laughs> brilliant uh interesting one from danielle hey she's uh, actually got on there that um she's got a, a work facebook profile for that reason um to allow her to join industry groups under her under her sort of professional brand um i like that um uh so i think another question came back in um about <laughs> the the pixel wendy's just saying there that angela looks good in lycra <laughs> um so let's see uh yeah danny uh, so sorry about linkedin pixel uh, can we do this on personal or company pages or do we need an ads page okay so you'll create a um, ad advertising account on linkedin and basically the tools within that would allow you to um, create that bit of code and, and activate that their equivalent of the pixel 
cool. and that will go on your website. So any adverts you run will be run as your company. Awesome. Not as yourself as an individual. Yeah, cool. So you'll be retargeting them under that. Awesome. Um, oh, William's actually downloaded Duck Super already. He's got it working. Says it looks great. There we go. Good. Good bit of value. Good takeaway. I, I can go now, right? <laughs> yeah, that's us. We're done, right? Thanks, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's have a chat about uh, about Twitter. Um, and um, yeah, how do you how, what do you think of Twitter as a platform in general? Um, so it's great for awareness. Mm-hmm. It's great for showing that you're an expert in your field. Beyond that, right now, if you're looking for something that's going to drive traffic to your website, it's not your guy. Cool. So you've got to be really clear on your objectives with Twitter. Um, yep. and sort of just have a real strategy behind that. Cool. And what's the biggest mistake you see recruiters making on Twitter? Um, it probably comes down to expectations. Mm. So it's a, like I say, it, it, it doesn't drive traffic. Okay. So the fact that it doesn't drive traffic means that it's not going to get candidates to those listings and hitting the apply button. Okay. Yep. So it's as simple as that. So what we then see is recruiters with perhaps, perhaps there's a lack of strategy around Twitter. And mm-hmm. it's something a lot of people just, they struggle to get their heads around it. Okay. So like I said, I, I think it is, my job is to change the expectation. Yeah. What I was talking to, um, did a review this morning with a client. We're, we're looking at their Twitter activity. And the reality is we paused that activity for a little while and their organic traffic just went through the floor just absolutely went backwards we kicked it off again at the same level we were at previously the organic traffic grew again so although it's not directly driving you know hits back to the site it is creating noise that's affecting their search rankings as well um you know which is really important and sometimes we lose sight of that everyone wants to be paid from a google Mm-hmm. And they kind of think SEO and they think keywords, but they forget that, you know, almost 30% of that algorithm is about there being a buzz about your brand online. And that's where Twitter really does come into its own. So it's having that strategy in place um, and engaging. If you don't yeah. engage on there, then, yeah, you may as well not bother, really. Yeah, It's not a platform you can just broadcast and forget about. Yeah, you've got to get involved in conversations. It comes back to the whole being social side of things. Yeah, it's, you know, with Twitter, you've got to show up. You've got to be part of that community. If, if you were, like, starting up your own agency tomorrow, um, would you suggest that a, a, start, a solo agency owner uh, starts up Twitter accounts, or would you suggest it's just not not, not worth it? Um, I, it depends on their sector. Okay. Yeah, it it's, depends on their sector, depends on their geography, depends on their social ability. They need to have one platform and do it really, really well. And yep. when they're doing that, when it, they're consistently doing it well, then bring on the second one. Don't kind of spray and pray. Yeah. You know, right, I need to do social media. So I'm on LinkedIn. I've got a Facebook page. Here's a Twitter account, Instagram, Pinterest. Yeah. You know. It's overwhelming. And, yeah, and then they're thinking, I don't have time to do it all. It's not working for me. Well, actually, if you just stuck with the one or two that you could cope with, that you could manage effectively, then maybe actually you'd be seeing a ton of results. Yeah. Um, and also, like I said, sector to sector. So I give the example and include Pinterest because I started working at one point with a recruiter who'd literally done that. Um, they'd been in recruitment for years and years and years, decided they needed sort of, you know, keep up with the times we're going to launch ourselves on social they went everywhere including pinterest but they operate in oil and gas and you just kind of think don't get many rough necks on pinterest do you no (laughs) and and it is a like i say if you know if you're recruiting within the fashion industry yeah pinterest makes sense yeah yeah fish where the fish are had to get the pun in there absolutely (laughs) (laughs) um so Instagram, so it's probably my favorite uh, favorite social media platform uh, out there. Um, you see, many of uh, many recruiters have success on that as a platform. It's hit and miss, mm-hmm. and it comes down to objectives. So it's a 
some recruiters, the recruiters that are doing Instagram really well are the recruiters that are on a big growth pattern and they want to grow their teams and they want to really, they want to attract the right people into their business. So it's very much an employer branding tool. Yep. Okay. The other way I'm seeing success is, so I've, we ran a campaign for a recruitment business and they had massive success from Instagram Yep. without having an Instagram account. Tell me more. So Facebook advertising. Mm-hmm. So with your Facebook ads, you've got various placements, one of which is Instagram. Yep. So we knew, and just rewind to what I said about, you know, be where you can do the best job. Mm-hmm. Okay. So they don't have the capacity. They don't have the, you know, the, the, the bums in seats in their business to be able to look after Instagram too. Yep. So what we did was we used their Facebook profile to run adverts on Instagram. Um, their target audience, it, it was automotive recruitment. And you're looking at kind of your, you know, your maintenance engineer, your, you know, your, your sort of mechanic type level, um, some apprenticeship roles in there as well. But, you know, a, a mix. Yep. Generally, you're looking at like the 30 and under market. Mm -hmm. So we ran those ads and we got people clicking through, through the adverts. We retargeted them and we had application after application after application. We were filling roles. It was fantastic. It worked fabulously. And they didn't, like I said, they didn't have the capacity to maintain that Instagram presence in a, in a, you know, the, the best way possible. So that's how they did it. And what I say to recruiters now is if you're thinking of running Instagram, because it doesn't work for everyone, yep. r- use Facebook ads initially and test the waters. Either uh, you'll get the return or you won't. And off yeah. the back of that, you can then make the decision. We're getting loads from this. We've got someone here that can really take control of the platform. Or you outsource it. I yeah. Know yeah. One. Uh, <laughs> and like I said, you know, you can then take it from there. If you find that, the fish aren't biting um but you know that's when you go right instagram right now it's not for our business and you try it again in six months 12 months because the audience is consistently changing that's really interesting we've got a couple of we put a blog out recently about um like cool instagram accounts to follow it's all recruitment agencies um and we've got a, we've got a client as well that does it's like civil engineering and um the stuff that they do like working on like these uh suspension bridges like over eight like mainland to islands and stuff it's like really like wow massive big stuff so when they share that out they get loads of engagement on instagram and then they use that to drive some traffic back to their site um they're called, see if I can find it, it's uh, Carmichael UK. They're like a big a big engineering one. I'll drop the link in there. But they've went from, they've, I think they've got approaching 20,000 followers and it's just it's just mad. But it's, the images that they use are so cool because of the types of the projects that they work on. It's, it's, it just, just works for them. This is the thing. And stock imagery on Instagram is not going to do it for you. Yeah. It's got to be real. It's got to be raw. You know, it's a, and like I said, you know, it's what you want out of it. Mm-hmm. So if you look at the green umbrella Instagram account, okay, it is predominantly it's our blogs. Yep. Okay. We will do more kind of, um, you know, real world stuff through Instagram stories, yep. but our posts themselves are very much, it's the blog, the blog, the blog, because for us, it's a reassurance tool. Yeah. The only thing we're really getting out of Instagram is the fact that people expect us to be there, so we are. Okay. Yeah. And that kind of that that's where our sort of effort ends, if you like. Yeah. So, you know, right now it's just not a fantastic, you know, it's not an amazing tool. The age range that you know, the, the demographic on there is is not our thing. Yeah. Um, so Ebony's just popped in the post about West Ray Recruit on Instagram. Um, you know, that's an account I, that I've looked at before, actually, that I, I really like. I think their content's really good um, and that they've done some smart stuff in there as well. So that, that is definitely one worth looking at. 
Cool, and Tony saying that they featured on the Killing It on Instagram block. Well done, Tony. Um, I've got I actually just missed one there again from uh, so Danny um, saying uh, break away from Instagram just now. But what do you think of Google reviews? Do you think this is better than putting a testimonial on your website? Okay, so yeah, collect Google reviews, Facebook review, reviews, LinkedIn recommendations, grab them and put them on your website. Okay, yeah. it's social proof. I could write something up now. So Christina is wonderful from Mrs. Smith of Basildon, Essex. Yeah. You know, it's, you know, we, we can we can make them up. But yeah. actually, if it's a Google review, you know, it, you know, it's gen. Well, you would hope it's genuine. Um, think- so it is that, it, that extra bit there. And you can always link it back to that Google review too. I think like, building that into your <laughs> everyone take a moment and read wendy's comment there <laughs> i think just building stuff like google reviews into your process if you do a good job with a candidate or you've placed someone and a client's really happy just build it into your process when you do that first check-in it's like hey you know, how's things going you know brilliant would you mind just pop it on just make it really easy for them give them all the information that they need to be able to do the google review for you um and then they'll yeah you'll, you'll increase that um <laughs> One of the things we've done previously is um, LinkedIn reviews. So obviously mm-hmm. you know, your, your consultants potentially are collecting those rather than your business. Yeah. So actually we then would take those reviews, put mm-hmm. them on our website, but link them back to the person that left the review. Ah, that's cool. Okay. So if you're, you know, if your consultant were to move on, that review is still with your brand. So it just allows you to get a bit of ownership. And at the same time, the people in your business, you're helping to build their personal brand too, which, of course, you're going to benefit from. Ah, that's really cool. I like that. That's really smart. Um, if there are, if there's anyone tuned in today um, who's using social media, but they don't really have a proper strategy in place, in place yet, what would your advice be to help them get started? It's got to be object. Well, you know, book a call with me, clearly. Um, yeah. But... Um, do you know, I'm working working on a resource at the minute that um, I sort of shared for the first time during that we were both at last week. Um, yep. But there's basically, there's a ton of questions you can work through, okay? But the first thing is, what are your objectives? And I would max it at, at three objectives you want to achieve, and that's what you're going to measure against. Yeah. I have a really clear idea of... Um, what you you know how you want your profiles to look what type of content you want to have out there and kind of have a bit of a brainstorm around that as well yep i would forget that you're a recruiter Mm -hmm. and put yourself in the shoes of your audience and go actually when they sit in front of linkedin or they sit in front of facebook what are they looking to engage with and it's probably nothing to do with vacancies yeah yeah it's nothing to do with the recruitment process. Um, it's nothing to do with interview skills or how to put your CV together. Okay. Yeah. And actually think, right, what is, you know, what should I be creating? What is going to give them value? And if it's anything to do with the business you're in that appears on that list, put a line through it. Because yeah. that's back to you selling your service. You're not in their heads again you know and and you've really got to be in their heads what do they want to say yeah cool that's awesome that's such good advice for anyone watching or listening in the other thing as well that we have lots of conversations with is like see measuring roi from social media has always been a bit of a challenge yeah. um particularly for any uh, agency owner and um, it's all about speaking to clients candidates and filling jobs and um, do you have any tips on how uh, agency owners or recruiters for that matter can measure um roi more effectively from social the thing with social media is I so when I'm presenting I always sort of use an analogy and yeah if you've bought a house or you know someone that's bought a house recently they'll go you know it'll be like oh you know that the front door it's this fantastic red color I really love it or you know it's made out of a particular type of stone the garden's amazing there's this massive kitchen it's got this really cute breakfast bar yeah no one ever says Cameron I've seen this house the cement is orgasmic (laughs) and the reality is you know all all the bits you put together when you're marketing it's your social media that holds it all together yeah okay so actually you need to take notice of that so I always go Google Analytics 
and you're looking for, you know, are we performing better in search? Because if everything's working together, you should be. Yeah. Okay. Are, you know, the direct hits on the website, have they increased? Where are our referrals coming from? Okay. Are they quality referrals? Are they referrals we're not having to pay for? Yeah. Social media is working. These, these are all the outcomes you're going to see. Yes, we should see an increase in candidates coming through. We should see an increase in the phone calls coming through. Okay. Yeah. But if, you know, if I sat with someone, um, they've been doing their own social media and they said, you know, the phone's not ringing any more than it was. And I kind of said, but you never post your phone number. <laughs> So, you know, it's kind of like, a, actually, we know the social media piece is happening. Yeah. You need to, on a weekly or, you know, at least a monthly basis, have a bit of a plan of what's happening next, what's happening over the next week, the next month, the next quarter. Make sure you're reflecting that. Have a look at what you've done the last week, last month, what didn't work, what did work. So you're constantly reflecting in that way. If you want to track how many likes you've got, how many follows you've got, that's fine, but it's probably the least important number. Mm-hmm. It's your reach that matters. I can have 10,000 likes on my Facebook page and two people see my posts. Or I could have 50 likes and 10,000 people see my posts. Yeah. So, you know, it's that reach that matters. I don't care about impressions that much. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's it's the reach and it's the click-throughs. Um, and it's having the, like I say, it's, it's the plan. We've gathered all this data, so now we can do this stuff. Brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. Um, I always like to finish off these shows by asking the guests, um, what do they think the future of recruitment looks like? Stories. Mm -hmm. Stories, stories, stories. That's where, so there's, there's two definite things in the future of social. Okay, and that's just going to follow on into recruitment. Video, we've been talking about for what three years now. Yeah. It's been the next big thing. Well, it it, it it is the big thing now. It's you know, that's just how it is. Um, stories is going to be massive. So you know, it's Facebook are putting loads of energy into that. We're seeing them on Instagram. They've got plans um, where WhatsApp's concerned as well. YouTube now are starting to play with stories as well. It's a matter of time and we'll have them on LinkedIn. So actually, how do you leverage that as an opportunity? Ephemeral content, you know, if you want to see this vacancy, here's the information. It's only going to be here for 24 hours. Uh, Fear of missing out. Absolutely. FOMO all the way. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Christina, look, massive thank you. Um, I know you have been traveling about a lot recently. So thank you so much for making the time out to come on and join us today. Um, if anyone on here wants to uh, get in contact for you with you for a chat, what's the best way to do that? Yeah, so probably best thing is, um, you know, find me on LinkedIn or um, give me a follow on Twitter. So it's Chris. Christina Mc80 on Twitter. Um, but yeah, just um, yeah, give me a shout on LinkedIn. Brilliant. Thank you again. Um, we have dropped a, an ebook down at the bottom for you um, on how to use paid social and recruitment. So if you're looking for any further hints or tips, feel free to click on that and give that a wee download. Um, once again, I appreciate everyone that's tuning in today. Thank you so much for coming in uh, and a big shout out to everyone that took the time out to comment as well. Thank you so much. That's what makes these shows. So uh, yeah, have a fantastic afternoon, morning, evening, wherever you might be. And thanks very much for joining us. We'll see you all again soon on the next one. Cheers. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye.